This is National 9 News with Joe Hall. Premier Kennett's position again under attack with new claims he misused his power. A digger's emotional return after 75 years at the front. And Senna's perfect performance on the streets of Adelaide. Good evening. The row over Premier Jeff Kennett allegedly using parliamentary resources for his private businesses has deepened. The opposition is seeking legal advice on a Supreme Court challenge to Mr Kennett's position as Premier following new claims by his former business partners. Belinda Byrne reports. The Premier's former partners in a knitting mill today spoke out about their dealings with Mr Kennett. One of those partners, David Powers, who's still involved in the knitting mill, confirmed oh, the use of government resources. My partner and I went up to uh, the Seymour Knitting Factory from Melbourne in the government car on a couple of occasions. The chauffeur would bring the wages round and I would uh, then get them from him. I personally had had probably seven or eight meetings in Jeff's office, but a couple of them with my partner were basically board meetings that we had there. Again, I took it that this was normal practice and everybody did it. Mr. Kennett became involved in the Woolen Company in 1991 when he was an opposition backbencher. Today, Western District grazier John O'Sullivan, who was also a partner with Mr. Kennett, spoke out, saying he enjoyed trips in chauffeur-driven official government cars. We had uh, correspondence on government letterhead, and we had uh, trips to Seymour in the government car. This is damning evidence, to say the least. The Premier should now stand aside and allow a full judicial and independent inquiry to take its course. The opposition is seeking legal advice over claims that Mr Kennett used parliamentary resources while a director for his private businesses. The Premier refused to comment today, but a government spokesperson stressed it was Mr Kennett in the first place that helped prevent the ultra-fine company from closing down. Belinda Byrne, National 9 News. A violent domestic argument at Airport West has ended with an elderly man shot in the leg by police. Two officers went to the backyard of a house where a man in his late 70s was attacking another man with a machete. According to police, the attacker attempted to seize an officer's gun. In the struggle that followed, a shot was fired, hitting the man in the left leg. He was taken by ambulance to Royal Melbourne Hospital. Detectives investigating the backpacker murders are following up cl claims by a Melbourne couple. They may have encountered the killer while hitchhiking in the barrel area. Simon Boder reports police are also hunting for a weapon that was used to shoot British tourist Caroline Clark. Caroline Clark was the only victim to be shot. Police are sure the weapon used was a 22 calibre. Today, reports nominating the exact type of weapon were played down by task force investigators. Obviously, speculation um, that is probably not correct probably won't hamper, but it, uh, it probably distracts um, people with information uh, that they wish to give. But police have confirmed they're checking all 22s owned by locals in the Southern Highlands. Detectives are also combing through the files of at least 30 missing people across the country. They fear the Bolangolo State Forest could still be hiding more victims. The area is to be searched thoroughly. Uh, what we've, We're doing that uh, to find whatever is there. Today, police chaplain Barry Dwyer was called in, acting as counsellor to the scores of searchers scouring the bush for more bodies. I think their morale is very good. I think the fact that they've been able to find um, some of the bodies and find some of the things that are around has helped them to sort of see that it hasn't been in vain. Plans are still being prepared for the escalation of the search to begin tomorrow. So far, the cadaver dogs have found no more human remains. Meanwhile, task force detectives are anxiously awaiting results of forensic tests to determine how the latest victims, Gabor Neugebauer and his girlfriend, Anya Habsheed, died. Simon Boda, National 9 News. 75 years after leaving to fight for his country, Australia's unknown soldier has returned home. Arriving in Sydney this morning, he's the only serviceman ever killed on the Western Front to be brought back from the battlefields. John Collis has the story. The, the unknown digger came home. 75 years later, Australia was ready with a golden sunrise and a hero's welcome. He was just an ordinary soldier, they say, identified by his belt, buckle and boots. But there was nothing ordinary about the significance of this homecoming. That there's something come back to the soul of the nation that it desperately needs. Symbolically at this moment, 
the spirit of Australia's war dead, buried in 75 countries around the world, touched down on Australian soil. Crowned with slouch hat and bayonet, the coffin was flown by RAAF Hercules to the national capital. Here, in King's Hall, in the old Parliament House, near the statue of the monarch he died defending, the remains will lie in state until Thursday. Then, on the 75th anniversary of the armistice, this ordinary Aussie digger will be entombed as a field marshal. Home at last, to rest for eternity. John Collis, National Nine News. Brazilian Ayrton Senna today ended his arch-rival Alain Prost's dream of a fairy tale finale in the Australian Grand Prix. Senna's faultless performance on the street circuit was matched by a perfect day in Adelaide. Ken Sutcliffe begins our Grand Prix coverage. When we return, the Liberal leader getting tough with Bronwyn Bishop and a cruel twist of fate for a small country school. John Hewson is getting tough on the leadership issue, giving a warning to his rival, Senator Bronwyn Bishop. The opposition leader says a high-profile senator must stop fueling party disunity if she wants a place on the front bench. Here's Peter Harvey. John Hewson traces his leadership problems back to the moment Senator Bronwyn Bishop turned down his offer of a position in the shadow ministry. Since that time, there's been a perception that has grown of, of uh, disunity and instability and disloyalty. And, and he makes that's very that's plain just who he's targeting. Bronwyn has to deal with the perception that has grown as a result of her activities and other things of disunity and, and, uh, and uh, disloyalty. Despite recent displays of unity, Dr Hewson now says he'll lock Senator Bishop out of the front bench until she meets his demands. But Bronwyn will not come back till that perception is dealt with. Dr. Hewson also tried to deal with another significant problem, frontbencher Ian McLaughlin's public attack on the High Court's Marbo decision. Earlier this year, Dr. Hewson said the coalition accepted the native title ruling. Now he says that's not binding. Many of John Hewson's supporters believe he should have sacked Ian McLaughlin for breaching the original decision. That would have eased the current era of crisis and may have prevented the Prime Minister from weighing in. It's the weakest uh, and most helpless performance that I've seen a parliamentary leader uh, put in. He's now like a cork bobbing around in the ocean, pushed and shoved by any force, any influence which comes from this week to that. It's a classic Keating distraction. And it's about time the Prime Minister got on and, do, and uh, did the job in relation to Marvo. He's just playing politics with Marvo. Peter Harvey, Canberra. Two children aged three and five drowned in a dam this morning at a property near Horsham. It's believed they were on a ride on mole which plunged into the water. And a search is underway for a man missing feared drowned in the Goulburn River at Trawool, east of Seymour. The 21-year-old fisherman disappeared when he and a companion dived into the river to try to recover an upturned boat that was floating downstream. A small country school recently saved from the Kennett government's budget cuts has been destroyed by fire. Jason Cameron reports residents at Yan Yin, north of Melbourne, suspect arson. Residents say they were disturbed by loud noises and screeching car tyres just before the alarm was raised at five this morning. Established 140 years ago, the school originally catered for children of the workers building Yan Yin Reservoir. The hundred-year-old oak trees remain, but the original buildings are long gone, and with just 25 students, the school has fought a hard battle to survive. We've seen so many other small country schools go. Uh, we're concerned about this one, but... And then when we heard about the fire, we thought, oh no, all that worked for nothing. Harry's wife has seen three generations of her family pass through the little school. The idea of arson leaves her with mixed emotions. I'm a little angry, actually, if it has been deliberately lit. It's such a waste. But 140 years of history isn't about to end just because of the fire. An Education Ministry official on the scene had good news for the people of Yan Yin. Yes, I can give them assurance that uh, we will be replacing the school, yes. According to the Ministry, a relocatable classroom will be in place within days. But given the government's current priorities, it's highly unlikely the school will ever be rebuilt as a permanent structure. Jason Cameron, National 9 News. New Zealand faces months of political uncertainty with yesterday's general election producing a hung parliament. Both major parties have claimed victory, but as Gavin McDougall reports, it's the minor players in New Zealand politics who now hold the balance of power. Prime Minister Bolger's National Party went into yesterday's election with a 34-seat majority and the polls predicting a comfortable win. But as the votes were counted, confusion reigned, especially among TV commentators. 
At this stage, we have a government, but we don't have a government. With no majority and just 49 seats to Labor's 46, Jim Bolger nonetheless claimed victory. I have to say up front there is no question that we will form the next government if those seats are confirmed. In the Labor camp... The true believers. <laughs> the true believers. There is no moral authority for Mr Bolger to govern. And, and we have won because we have the largest percentage of the votes. But the biggest winners in the 99-seat New Zealand Parliament are the breakaway parties, New Zealand First and the Alliance, each with two seats and the balance of power. So we're going to have a parliament that represents the people. It's called democracy. Won't that be a change? Absentee votes could change the outcome, but if a hung parliament proves unworkable, a new election may have to be called, with yesterday's ballot also approving a change to the electoral system that could mean another 18 months of political uncertainty. Gavin McDougall, National 9 News. Now last night's winning tax lotto numbers draw 1283, 24, 12, 20, 3, 19 and 6. The supplementaries 9 and 29. And in Super 66 you'll need the combination 6, 9, 6, 6, 8 and 0. As the Formula One gas guzzlers were roaring around the Adelaide track, 3,000 kilometres away the world's quietest race got underway. 52 vehicles powered only by sunshine were flagged silently away from Darwin, leaving behind a trail of clean air. The sleekly lined futuristic sun machines from 13 countries streak down the Stuart Highway in the Third World Solar Challenge. They're expected to take at least 